Hello, this is Mark uh, with Shadow Wolf Designs. I am recording a 3D tutorial for you guys today. Um, and this tutorial is to give an overview of what you'll need to do for an assignment for Pierce College, uh, Digital Design 140, and currently it's assignment 6, and you're going to be using Motion Blur. So the thing with Motion Blur is that you need to have two models and then each surfaced and then what you're gonna have to do is place a null and you target the camera to it just like it says and then you move the camera around that object and what it w and is targeted to the null so it'll focus on that object the whole time and what it'll do is it'll blur everything else because you have to use blur alright so getting into it you need to have modeler done and I'm just doing really simple um, I have three objects in a ground plane because I'm also going to show one other thing I'm going to show how to displace the ground but uh... for the assignment you guys are going to have to have a full scene meaning sky dome or if you're interior you're going to have to have walls so you're going to have to have all of that in order to do get full credit for the assignment but for the sake of this we're just going to use these three assignments it'll let me work faster in layout alright so you load up your objects in layout and I am going to go into perspective mode alright so I'm going to zoom in here a little bit alright and now I want to surface everything differently so I have my ball my default which is my ground and the disc which is the cylinder right here so I'm just gonna use presets you guys have to use texture maps according to the assignment requirements but what I'm gonna do actually I'm not gonna use metal because metal increases render time because it's shiny I'm gonna use vinyl for the ball and for the disc I will use uh, let's see we'll use rubber and then for our ground plane use something from nature we'll use leaf okay and now obviously I am in texture shaded shaded solid so it's not looking the greatest you don't see all the actual texture but there you go there's the actual textures alright so first things first we need to put a null in here so you need to add null just click on that you can leave it named null see now you have control of it and you won't see it no matter what it just shows up here so you can control it and I'm gonna put this inside uh, let's get into a top view there we go I'm going to put this inside my cylinder. I'm going to roughly center it. Alright. Now what you need to do is go to the camera, hit M. What this does is it gives you specific options for the camera. You need to make sure you have the camera selected first and then you'll press M. And then you target the null it's that simple so now no matter what you see this this dotted orange line here that means you're targeting whatever's right here so if we go into the camera view we move the camera no matter where we move it we're targeting that null so that's where our focus is going to be the entire time I can't break off I can't rotate makes motion easier because you only have to worry about position you do not have to worry about rotation because your position affects the rotation okay next step motion blur go into properties on the camera properties and you'll notice right down here we have motion effects motion blur now you can use classic dither or photo reel for this assignment I would not suggest photo reel because it will take more time I believe for this assignment and when I did it I used classic so that's what I'll cover 
So, use classic. We'll do three passes. And then we'll see what it looks like. Actually, first, we have to set a second keyframe. So, it looks like, oops, sorry, we're gonna, you got depth, oh, sorry, right here under this arrow next to your, your view type, there's another arrow, and if you want to, if you open G, open GL overlay, it actually lets you see where your your lights, your camera, and your uh, capture boundaries are. And then if we come down here to depth of field motion blur preview, we'll actually get to see a little bit of the motion blur happening. And obviously the blur is not that um, we got three passes, blur length, okay, let's try taking this off, we'll switch it to dither, and then blur length up to 75. And what this should do is when your Oh, there we go. You can see it now a little bit. You see the haze around that. That's the actual blur. No blur. It starts to get fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. And then it starts to get clearer again because it's not really moving too much. And if we go back in, we can switch this back to classic. And we should be able to still see it. Yep, there's still the motion blur there. Remember, photo reel is just going to take longer to render, so I wouldn't do photo reel. But you can definitely you can see that blur there, that soft edge where as this is still nice and crisp. It's because you're focusing on this. This is blurred. This is blurred. Now in VPR you don't see it as much. However, when you render it, if I'll just do a quick F9 render and we'll hit continue and you see that there is blur there now obviously I don't have my the width and the height set right I also don't have my um, anti-aliasing samples turned up so it's not looking as good as it would alright now I told you guys I would show you one other thing and that is a displacement map and in order to do this this needs to be on a separate layer which I completely forgot about, so I apologize. But we will just put that on a different layer like that. And you guys, Brian should have explained it, but these up here are your layers. This is layer one, two, and it goes on and on and on. If you have one layer selected and you click the bottom half of another layer, it shows you the wireframe of whatever's on that layer. Those are not selectable, they're not editable but it shows you the positioning of stuff. As you can see, this actually goes through the, the floor just a hair. But, it's just, it lets you position stuff without having to alter stuff, and it's lets you move objects separately. Because now if I wanted, I could come into here, grab layer two, and I can move the floor separate. And you guys should know that, because I'm pleased some of your assignments have gone over that. But in order to do a displacement map, the ground needs to be on its own layer. And what we'll do is we'll select the object, go to properties, you'll start out on geometry, and first thing we'll do is subdivision order last. That is important, because otherwise it will look all sorts of jacked up. Then you click on the deform tab up here. Click on displacement map and that is in the third section technically this is the first section line here second section line here very top of the third section and this lets you add either a image map or a procedural texture or a gradient I'm going to use a procedural texture just for demonstration purposes but you see we got all these different ones um, 
the one that it started on, which was Turbulence, is a good one. It gives you nice bumpy ground. But if you're doing outdoors, this is a great way to quickly simulate non-flat ground. Obviously, you still need a texture on it with a bump map. But this will quickly give you a non-flat ground. And then you just hit Use Texture, close it up. And you now have a non-flat ground. That also sort of looks like a cloth with the way it's set up. But it's just a quick little way to do a displacement map. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to this tutorial, and I hope it helped you. If there's any questions, leave a comment in the comment section of the video. And I look forward to any feedback, and I look forward to the next video that you guys would like me to make. Have a great day, and good night.